بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. So we're moving on to this hadith where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم دعاء الله مقسم لنا من خشية كما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيك one of the main parts of the hadith. So hadith number twenty four ninety two. So the Rami he says قل ما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوم من مجلسه. So very seldom, Qalla, very seldom, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stand from a gathering hatta yad'u biha ula'id da'awat until he would. So what you could do translate is Qallama, similar to negative, and this hatta similar to illa. Following. So whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stand from a gathering, he would make dua for these words for his companions. Let's go through this bit by bit now, inshallah. The word qallama is used means seldom or rarely. Now, one, one structure of this is ma is kafatun. So ma is kafa. This ma here, qallama, is kafa. And it's not like the same way you have kafa on harfa mushabbun bil fail. You have kafa on inna, anna, lakinna, ka'anna, ka'annama, innama, annama. That stops the amal and it allows it to then function differently. It doesn't have to enter into Jumna Ismiya, etc, etc. So similarly, he's saying this Ma is Kafa, and it stops the fail, which is Qalla, is a fan. It stops that fail from seeking or need, needing a marfu. Are you following? وَمُحَيَّعَةً لِلْدُّخُولِ عَلَى الْجُمْلِ الْفَعْلِيَةِ And it allows this word, this structure, to come onto Jumna Fa'liya, because normally Qalla is a verb itself. It needs to have a file after it. But by adding qallama, it kind of uh, or morphs or mutilates the original structure of this word. You understand? So it is no longer going to be a file after it, and it's no longer going to have to come onto a fa'il, and it can then proceed to jumla fa'liya. Okay? And another, another possibility is ma is harfu master. Instead of being ma kafa, some have said harfu master. So qalla, and then ma is harfu master. And then everything after it becomes the fa'il. Are you following? That's another Arab of doing it. Hacha. And some people have mentioned, or to sta'malu qallama li ma'nayin. When you have qallama, it comes for two purposes. One purpose is nafi, a sirf, meaning pure nafi. Like what I said about how I translated it here, qallama, like la, or ma. And the other one is, is like, in the Quran, وَقَلِيلًا مَا يَشْكُرُونَ وَقَلِيلًا مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ So, which means that قَلِيلًا and قِلَّة, very less amount, is used to uh, show the meaning of none. That's the first possibility. Or قَلَّ can also be used to show قَلِيل, meaning not a lot, but a little opposite of كَثِير. So the حقيقية, the literal meaning of قَلِيل is less, but it can also be used in meaning of none. So that's why you can have two possible meanings of قَلَّ Like he would never ever sit except he would make this dua. Or... Uh, very seldom he would not make this dua. So which is very similar. I always or very seldom not. So there's two possibilities of this. Acha. Then we have here li-ashabi. So he would make the following dua. Allahumma qasim lana min khashyatika. Li-ashabi. Which is for li-ashabi. It means here, a possibility, that he would make the dua. Okay? And he would say, Allahumma qasim lana. The sayaka is plural. So when he would make this dua, he would make dua for everybody. Not Allahumma qasim li min khashyatika ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayni wa bayna ma'asiyatik. Allahumma qasim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bihina wa bayna ma'asiyatik. So it's jama'a. So because he's using the jama'a word, that's why he's making dua for his companions, everybody who was there to gather him. Or, he yad'u biha ula al-kalimat, he would make dua, not for them, but for their benefit, to teach them. Ay ta'liman li ashabihi. Like, teach them, he would say these words, ta'liman to teach them. You understand? The two possibilities. Yeah? So either he would make the ashabi, he would mean, he would make dua to include them in the dua. Now let's make, let me make dua for all of you. Or it could also be, he would teach them this dua. Allah What's the dua? The dua is, Allahumma qasim lana. Then you have, so Allah, grant us, I'll explain it more detail later on. Grant us, one, two, three. So now we have ma'atuf, three different variations. This is all part of the, Ma'atuf. Ma'atuf alayhi ma'atuf. Ma'atuf. Acha. 
اقسم لنا وزي اقسم لنا most of the scholars have mentioned is اجعل لنا قسما ونصيبا what have you اقسم لنا so قسم يقسم can be to distribute and it can also when you distribute it results in giving a person a share so that's what they say here so اقسم لنا means uh, attribute, dest not attribute, uh, divine, uh, destined, give, grant us a portion. So, iqsim lana ayish wa sallallahu give us a portion. Okay? Correct? You understand? You follow me? That's what it is here. But the question could be, well, why use iqsim lana and not aqtina? So, Allahumma qasim lana min khashyatik, Allahumma aqtina min khashyatik, Allahumma rzukhna min khashyatik. Are you following? So this could probably have like an isti'ara, meaning that oh Allah, you, you, you give everything, you're the qasim, you give people different things, and you will give people different things. So I want your, I'm not asking for your wealth, I'm not asking for dunya, I'm asking for khashyatik, ta'atik, and yaqeen. So when you're distributing, then make sure you get this for me. Are you following? It's like, let's say for example, there's a person, uh, he's given out some stuff. Yes, this is, this is an old um, warehouse, an old... Uh, warehouse, or let's say old, fa old, old office is getting uh, going into li liquidation, they're selling off everything or getting rid of everything. You tell me, yeah? you know what, get me the, uh, the papers, or get me the uh, desk, or get me the chairs. So when the things are being given out, give me, get me this, meaning everybody will get something, but this is what I want. So now you give everybody everything, but I make sure you give for me. So I want this in my portion. So Allah distribute for us or grant us in your distribution. In the things that you give everybody, make sure you give me these things. Asha. Then we have here, مِنْ خَشَّتِكَ مَا تَخُولُ بِهِ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ مَعَاصِيكَ Grant us from your khashya. Okay? So this min, so how do you Arab of this? You have min khashyatika. Then we have مَا تَخُولُ So the first possibility is, is مَا is نَكِرَةٌ مَوْصُوفَةٌ now, you will have done this in um, Kubra, those of you in Kubra already. And you already have studied this a bit. You have, you have ma nakira mausufa, you have ma uh, as a sifa as well. What does this mean? Sometimes ma comes in the meaning of shay. Yes? Ma comes in the meaning of shay. Okay? Yeah. So ma is nakira. Mausufa means bi ma'na shay. So, Allahumma qasim lana min khashyatika shay'an. Correct? And the min is tab'idiyya. Correct? Min khashyatik. Correct? So, the maf'ul is Allahumma qasim lana shay'an. Correct? Tahulu bayna bayna ma'asik min khashyatik. This, this is like this basically. So shay'an muqaddar. Min khashyatika, this becomes a hal. And it tahulu bih bayna na or bayna ma'asik becomes a na' of shay'an. So they're both basic kind of not, but in Arabs comes hal, that becomes a thing. So Allah, grant me a portion from your khashya, uh, your fear, your awe, your reverence for him. So in this, in this one here, we can translate shay'an as that amount of. So Allah, grant me that amount of. You understand? So grant me that amount of khashya, which comes between me and you. Some have said this ma is mausula. It's not nakira mausufa. So when ma is nakira, so then obviously it's nakira. So shay, ma means shay'an, so then it has a na'at. It's like an ism, meaning shay'an. So it has a, that meaning. But you can also have, you can also have it as a ma'na of ma mausula. When it is ma mausula, what does it mean? Uh, yeah. So, Min khashyatika, forget the shay'an. Yeah. So this shay'an is understood because of min tab'idiyya. Because min tab'idiyya means ba'dha. Isn't it? If it's min tab'idiyya, it means ba'dha khashyatika, some of your fear. So Allah, grant me some of your fear. Alright? So it, we are in this shay'an, not because it's man mawsu, ma nakira mawsufa, but it's understood. You can even take that off if you want to. Okay? Ma, uh, Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ay some of your fear. You can also say min. One Arab of the min that tabi'idiyya is, is uh, shabihun ni za'id. So therefore has no mahamun al-Arab ay. Grant me some of your fear. Alright? 
And then this alati, this ma, this is a translation of the ma. A ma is ma'rifa. Which, so grant me some of your fear. Which fear? This is, a na, this, this is now the na'at of the khashyatik. Are you following? And in this scenario, it's a na'at of the shay'an. So Allah, Allah grant me some of your khashya, some of that khashya of yours, which tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiq, which comes between me, us, and your ma'asiq. Are you following the Arab of this? Yes, is it clear? Online, what's that? Following? Now we're saying khashya, logatan khashya, is al khawf ma'a ma'rifati jalal al maqshiyya alayhi. So khashya is khawf, you have fear. But this fear is nashi and it stems from and results of, results of the azama, the grandeur of the maqshi minhu. We have a maqshi minhu, the thing that you have khashya of. You're not fearful of his harm, of his darar, of his zulm. You're fearful of his azama. So when you have khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a fear. But not necessarily a fear out of like uh, karaha. Like you have somebody who have a phobia of snakes, phobia of lions. They don't like spiders. They don't like. Uh, they're worried about bankruptcy. They're worried about um, inflation. They're worried about theft. So you can't have khashya of these things. But you're scared of these things with karaha, and you have you're fearful of your father khashya meaning he's uh, juma respect. So I have uh, azama of him in my heart, and that's what I fear that I shouldn't do anything to. Displease him or against his rulings, against his wishes. For him, the word khawf and khashya. Is that clear? Achya. That's why that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah min ibadi ulama. Those who have knowledge. It doesn't mean you graduate from an alim course. It means here, you do ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you've done Arabic or not. So the ulama here doesn't mean <laughs> you don't become a, you don't become this ayah of mistaq just by studying the a four year course or five year course. It means the first ayah say. You do tadabbu in the heavens and the earth and you recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's consciousness in your heart all the time. Then you have ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you say, I have khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That being who creates the heavens and the earth, that being who provides for me, that being who gives me every single second of mind, I'm his, his ihsan. My heart is pumping. I don't have any control over my heart. My, my blood is flowing through my veins. I have no control over this. I'm digesting the food. I don't know how I'm digesting the food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing all of this to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing oxygen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing food, safety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the khalif of the heavens and the earth. So in myself, I can see all these alamat in the heavens and the earth. The sun is rising. The moon is moving around. Everything is in an orbit. Kullun fi falakin yasbukhun. Such a great khalif. How can I disobey him? Allahumma qasim lana min khashyatik. I have such awe of you. What does it do? It becomes a khashya. Now we say his master. Yes. So now, is the maf'ul bihi? So we fear you. So your fear. Now, hala yahulu. So tahulu. So hala yahulu haylula tan. I forgot to put translation. It means here to come between two things. For example, you say ha'il, a veil, a barrier. Correct? So which comes, so we say stops, meaning it, it comes between Allah yahul bain al mari wa qalbi. Allah even has a capacity to stop you between, you think, oh, me and my heart, we are one. Even between that, Allah has control. So ha'il to come between two things. Yes? So ha'il yahulu ha'ilu latan. So we have here ta'hulu. What do you have here? Ta'hulu. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulhi al-kareem amma abad. So we've discussed the meaning of hala yahulu means to come between two things. Now in terms of the dhamir, in terms of the dhamir, in tahulu and yahulu, what is it? So first of all, uh, the riwaya, one riwaya is tahulu, one riwaya is tahulu, and the other riwaya has yahulu. So if it's tahulu, what will happen here? He would say, that the file is the mustatir anta, correct? And we first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma, O oh Allah, grant us that amount of khashya via which ma bihi, and this is, uh, if this is a, this is the bihi is a mere refers back to ma, which refers back to khashya. So grant us that taqwa, or such taqwa, by which you come, you become a ha'il, 
using the khashya, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ha'il, you have, this is us, and then this is ma'asiyah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a barrier. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a barrier without anything, without asbab. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is way in the dunya that He uses asbab, He uses means. So He can, he can satiate us without giving us, without food, but He uses food. So Allah uses things too. This is Allah is the way the alam and the world works. So then what does Allah use? Allah uses the word Allah uses khashya. He creates khashya in our hearts. And then that khashya comes between us and ma'asiyah. Yes, so Allah. So you come between us and ma'asiyah via the khashya. So by the sababiyya. Then here, just a little note here is that uh, you see here, some have said ala and isti'ana. And is that really a respectful term, not respectful term? That's not really important right now, but you can go into it if you're interested. None of you say Yes? So that will work on the Tahulu Riwaya. If you look uh, further, you have the Yahulu Riwaya. Now, Yahulu, it can't be, the Zamir can't be Antaf is Yahulu. It has to be something else. So it can be Khashya because Khashya um, is a Masdar. So the Tahulu Riwaya is, is easier. But nonetheless, if you take Tahulu, or Yahulu Riwaya, then in that case, Yahulu Riwaya will refer back to Khashya, it becomes Masdar. Or Tahulu, but it refers to here, Zami, not Anta, but here. In this case, grant us your Khashya, grant us your Khashya, which comes between us and your Ma'asiyah. Correct? Now, what is this Bihi coming, referring to, Zami referring to? Because uh, this, this Tahulu, the here, Zami, are already referring back to Khashya. So, what's Bihi referring back to? So again, this may seem a bit weird. Um, but Tibir and some of them say it's called it's Mu'ham. Aqhama means to just place something inside. So we say, well, how can you do that? It's like a style of, um, it's a linguistic style. You add in additional words because it, it sounds nice. The context shows that's not the meaning. And it's understood. For example, one of the, one of the examples I can think of straight away here is, it's called, um, for example, um, Mazamira min Ali Dawood. Laqad utita, one the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to one of the companions, Laqad utita mazamira, ya mizmara min maza, min mazamiri, mazamiri Ali Dawood. Okay? Mizmara is like a, a trumpet, a flute, or like an instrument. So it's like a metaphor. Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam used to recite very beautifully. Yes, or we be ma'hu wa tayr wa lanna lawl hadid. Regarding Sayyidina Dawud alayhi salatu wa salam, that he would recite the Quran very, the Quran meaning his maqru, his tawrat, or not tawrat, the, um, the spams and the zabu, etc., very beautifully. So in the muhaddisun say, this al is muqham, not the mazamir of the family of Dawud, mazamir of Dawud. But like, this is um, this how we add in additional words in our English language, is one of them is called muqham, it's added in. And it doesn't really have a thing. So to us, it may not seem uh, feasible, we're not making this up, because those who have studied the language will say, well, this is an usuloob. So if you want to go down that route, this is, if you say the Zamir is referring to the here, then this bahi is going to be muqtam, muqham. Are you following? Yes? Okay. And if you say yahulu, tahulu, if you say tahulu with here, if you say yahulu with, with uh, huwa, it's because the yahulu is referring back to ma yahulu. So even though ma refers to khashya, so meaning is mu'annas, but in love is mudhakkar, because the mudhakkar is ma. So ma yahulu. So, ri'ayatan li lafzi ma. Considering the meaning, the word ma, ma is mudhakkar, so therefore it's going to be yahulu. And if you say it's mu'annas, then it's referring to the khashya. So that's why both are principles, yahulu and tuhulu. So it's two, two riwayat, and it's a possibility. The same thing will happen in here. Wa min ta'atika ma tuballighuna bihi jannatak. Yes? You have the same possibility here. Tuballighuna, either the Tuballighuna. See, if you look at it here, in the last one, وَمِنَ الْيَقِينِ مَا تُهَوِّنُ بِهَا لَيْنَا If you've got Tuhawwinu, if there's no Yuhawwinu, then it has to be the Anta Zamir all the time. Are you following? So is, it, is, the, is the Ya in all of the riwayat, or only in, um, in all the words, or in the only one of them? If it's both of them, we have the same situation again here. We say, Tuballighuna, Anta, Majr from the ta'a, ba musahaba, same exact structure. Majaz aqli. So Allah grant us your ta'a, which leads us to your jannah. And then Nabi is muqham again. And the same thing will happen here again. So Allah grant us your khashya. Grant us your ta'a. And grant us yaqeen. Which yaqeen? To hawwinu biha alayna musibat al-dunya. Which makes 
the musibah and the difficulties and the hardships of dunya easy for us. Because why? If, for example, you're going to, you're going to a, a, an operation, so you're going to take your kidneys out. You say, no, I don't want this. But you have yaqeen that after taking this kidney out, or even for example, a person has sugar, diabetes, I think sugar, they have to get a foot amputated because it will spread over the entire body. Well, because they have yaqeen that this amputation is better for me. So it makes it easier, as opposed to thinking, somebody just came and robbed me and cut my foot off. You understand? So if you have yaqeen of something, that look, this musibah of the dunya is only temporary. This musibah of the dunya is going to increase my darajat. Yes? If you have yaqeen of all of these things, what will happen? Hawwana yuhawwinu makes it easy. Hayyin. So, you think of it to be hayin easy. So, it makes it easy, lighten. Yes, sir. So, grant us such yaqeen that uh, it becomes easy for us to, the musibah of the dunya becomes lighter. And obviously, have yaqeen. Yaqeen of what? All of these things, all the ayat about things that only what Allah wants for us comes, all the dunya is temporary, the dunya is funny, these are all the means of reward. So, yaqeen of all of these things. So, grant us yaqeen of all of these different things. Uh, ayat and ahadith which makes the musibah of the dunya easy for us to bear and how it means yes sir now again just one point here is that musibah is plural musibatun and the other uh, plural is masaib other rewind is masaib now uh, sometimes tibi rahmatullah you have to go into the in more detail he's saying here that masaib actually is incorrect it's supposed to be masaib not masa'ib, it's supposed to be masa'ib dunya And he says here, you can't make the hamza, you can't, you can't change uh, this ya into a hamza, because it's not mazida, it's not extra. And it goes into detail. And he says, for example, comes to Quran, ma'ayish. You come to find it, ma'ayish. What comes to the Quran? It's not ma'ayish, it's ma'ayish. So it doesn't change, it's the same rule. But this word masa'ib has been used like for so long. So, even though, so it's two possibilities. If it was used, in the time and the era where you were considered the fusaha, the f- because obviously, if somebody you can't you can't use a Twitter account. Say, look, they're using it like this. So he's, he's speaking wrong. You can't use a, a, a chat room and say, "Allah, how the Arabs speak." This, this doesn't count. So there's a there's a it's called the zaman of istishhad, jahili poetry, and up till about let's say about 100, 150, something like 200. Like Imam Shafi's time, they would use their poems and their literature as dalil. That this is dalil that you can't speak this way. Afra is not Delhi. Like, the language got spoiled. So, Masa'ib should have been Masa'ib. But where did Masa'ib start being used from? It's like, we know everybody knows it's Masa'ib now. Are you following? So we say, if Masa'ib is being used from Jahili time, or even initial time, we say, well, it's Khilafun al Qiyas. And it's acceptable. That's how the Arabs speak. We can't put their rule, we can't put their language on our rules. But if, but if it came about after this time, we say now, it's because people are using it, it's like, it's, but it's from very early. I'm not sure how early this, this thing has spread. So it's very early people saying Masa'ib, so it's not a big issue. But technically, it's supposed to be Masa'ib. Is it Khilafun lil Qiyas or is it a mistake? It'd be Khilafun lil Qiyas if the people who are, whose Arabic is Dalil use it as Masa'ib. And if people who, whose Arabic is not a Dalil used it, then you say it's a common error. It's now, it's now become acceptable to say Masa'ib. Right? Achha. So a summary of this is now, if you go back to it, what's a summary of it? So if you go back one point here, it is. From, if we go back to over here, and we say here, Allahumma uh, qsim lana min khashyatika ma ta'hulu. This is said that amount of khashya. So understand the meaning is, so the maqsul is, if you have the khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's say for example, somebody, watches, somebody, they have trauma. They have trauma, isn't it? Like they have a scary, like children have a scary occurrence. Whole life they traumatize. They've got therapy and all that kind of stuff. So even adults, you get somebody goes through a very, very traumatic experience. What happens? For life, they're traumatized. So really, Allah's azamah is so great. Similarly, Jahannam and Jannah, such a great, Jahannam is such a, such a severe thing. If you were actually to have that istihadah 24 hours a day, you go into trauma. You understand? So he said, we don't want that that destroys us. We just want how much? Ma shay'an. We only want that amount of khashya which prevents us from disobeying you. Because if we have that amount of khashya, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, at the highest level, what will happen? We won't function because like, if a person knows that, you know, I'm going to be killed. Like, if a person is being surrounded, I might not be surrounded, be shot at. You're not going to pull out a sound of a burger, are you? You, you can't. So if, and Jahannam, is, Jahannam and the grave punishment is worse than this. So there's a possibility I may be shot. So you can't concentrate, you can't, you can't focus on anything in life. 
So if you have that 100%, I can die right now. I can die right now. I can go to Jahannam right now. I can go to Jahannam right now. I can go to Azab al-Khabar right now. You can't function. How much khashan do you want? Tahulu bayna bayna ma'asi. That's all that is matloob. You understand? So, that's enough. Once you have that amount of khashya that is saved from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is what we, the sharia needs from us. Achha. Now, the part of the hadith which we want to have a look at here is now, وَمَتِّئْنَا بِأَسْمَائِنَا وَأَبْصَارِنَا وَقُوَّتِنَا مَا أَحْيَيْتَنَا So here we have, مَتِّئْنَا بِأَبْصَارِنَا وَقُوَّتِنَا مَا أَحْيَيْتَنَا Yes. So, مَتَّئَ مَتَّئَ here means, إِجْأَلْنَا مُتَّمَتِّئِينَ مُنْتَفِئِينَ So, مَتَّئَ Come here, Quran translates many times, مَتَّئَ with dunya, the enjoyment, the luxuries, yes, the benefit. So, مَتَّئَ means, make us mutamatti'een. Make us, allow us to take benefit. Or we can also use properly. Why are we saying this use properly? Because this matta'ah can have two possibilities. What comes to the Quran? Mata'un ilahin. So basically, the maqsood of this is, Oh Allah, I'm asking, if you take this meaning, that Oh Allah, allow us to take benefit. This first translation. Meaning, what does this mean? Ibqa'uhuma sahihain ilal maut. Oh Allah, please don't let my I become deaf most of my life. Oh Allah, please don't let me become blind. Oh Allah, please don't let me become helpless and useless and uh, lose my quwa. Whether it's quwa of the body, quwa of the kidneys, quwa of the liver, quwa, any quwa. Keep my quwa with me as long as I am alive. That's one meaning. The second meaning is not only to take benefit, but to use properly. I.e. is matikna. That is use it. Not just having eyes for the sake of having eyes. But what do we do with eyes? Use it properly. We take we look at the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and conclude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and how great he is. We have our ears and we do istami'oon al-qawl wa ittabi'oon ahsana. We have a lisan and the lisan is used for dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The body of quwa is used to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not simply having ibqa'uhuma, when you not simply to have them remain with you as long as you live, but rather to be able to use them in a ta'a so they become na'afi' for you. Yes? Are you funny? Let's say for you have the mata'u dunya in front of you, but you don't use it. It's not really mata'. Correct? So we're saying here the maqsood is not only to take benefit and to use, but to use properly. This is probably ansab. If the dua. Not simply, I want to have my ears, I want to have my ears so I can use them properly, use them for your ta'a. So that's what the, the matta'a uh, is translated as and the meaning of matta'a is. Bi asma'ina, our hearing. Bi absarina, our seeing. Ma ahyaytana, ma is ma masdariya zarfiya, ma'na ma adama. Yes, as long as it's already came in Wusta. So as long as. Acha. Acha. Now, some have said, okay, the fa'ida. Why asma'ina wa absarina? Why mention these two particularly? So one of the shurrah of Shara has mentioned that the Prophet may have mentioned sama and basar first because when you have sama and basar, what do you do with this? You use the basar to do what? To use the la'il aqliya. You can see that there must be a creator for this. And sama, you can hear the Nabi or the message of the Nabi via the, 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 via the chain. So these things allow you to do what? Ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you have the ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is again, we have sama and basar. Yes? So, matina bi asma'ina wa basarina. Let us keep our ears and our eyes healthy. Then use it properly. When you use it properly, then we have, have the ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you want to do after the ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Worship him. What do you need for worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Quwwah. Do you get it? So, matina bi asma'ina wa basarina. So we can have the ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these two are for, for ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the quwa is for the quwa is for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quwa is then for the, the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You understand? That's like a little latifah, a little regarding this Now the next part we have here is وَجْأَلْهُ الْوَارِثَ مِنَّا Now here when we say وَجْأَلْهُ who's the who's the mirror referring to? We will say here Allahumma matta'na bi asma'ina wa absarina wa quwwatina It can't refer to asma' It can't refer to absar or quwwah individually Because these are all plurals But it says وَجْأَلْهُ الْوَارِثَ مِنَّا Alright So what he's saying What he's saying here is that مَا مُتَّئْنَا بِهِ So matta'na bi asma'ina wa absarina wa quwwatina And then the dhameer is a'idun ala al-ma'na It's a'idun It's the mean is a'idun Ila al-ma'na There is no one word that is referring back to, but in the context, we have an idea, like a, 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 a mafum. And the Zabi is referring to that mafum. For example, إِعْدِلُوهُ أَقْرْ بِتَقْوَى Who's who are referring back to? There's not one word. But when you say إِعْدِلُوهُ 
carry out justice and that i'dilu you are from there you understand justice meaning the who are refers back to the the i'dilu is ma'na the mafhum so similarly what alluhu meaning uh the what you give us with whatever you give us our asma our abasar our quwa and the ability for us to use this and the ability for us to use this for our entire lives make that alwaditha minna make that our inheritor now when he says say, inheritor the maqsood is make these things remain meaning it stays sahihun salimun and it also stays nafi'un muwaffaqun with tawfiq until we die and how is this understood it's like a tashbih you'd give a simile who will inherit from you those who remain with you until your last moments or they live, live after you let's say the father and the son yes and the father dies here and then the son dies one hour later so he wouldn't get a chance to uh, take the inheritance but you have to say well he has a share of the inheritance and then his inheritance of the son will be shared to his children you find it because he's passed away afterwards so whoever inherits from you even if it's one minute after even if he dies one minute after you what happens then he's your inheritor so it's basically it's like a tashbih and a simile that make our, whatever you give us, make it last with us and stay with us until our very last moment. Just as a wadi stays with you until your death and even after your death. But after death is not maqsood only the, until death is maqsood. So it means here, let us enjoy or use, enjoy and benefit and benefit correctly until our death. Right? Make, make those things remain till my death, like an inheritor who remains after my death. It's the ara. So as if he's saying, the thing who remains, remains with you is like a wadi and you have isti'ara. You understand? Are you following this meaning so far? Yes? The second possibility is, another possibility that is mentioned here is, um, yeah. so we have here, alwaritha minna. So what he's saying here is that this who is Amir is referring to the, the Ja'al and the Ja'al and Al-Ja'al. The meaning of this is, he's saying here, Waj'al. And this, again, I don't, uh, like, this is what I mentioned in the, in the, in the Shashruh. I don't understand that, like, the Usloob. How, how does Usloob work in terms of, if you translate it, and it says, this who's the meaning for Raja'al. But the meaning, I can tell you what the meaning is. But the Usloob, I don't understand, like, uh, this kind of structure. But this is what they're saying, the Shurra, who are better than Arabic than me. So they're saying that the who's the meaning refers to, uh, like, the actual Ja'alan. Master. And the maqsood is, like for example, what did Zakaria make the Wadi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? لا تذرني فرضا وأنت خير الوارثين ربي حبلي من لدونك ذرية طيبة Yes? So it means here, وَجْأَلْ الْوَارِثَ مِنَّا Yes? So it means here, قَدِّر So, so جَعَلْ does not mean to make one thing into another. جَعَلَ means make to create. Because جَعَلَ can have two meanings, to make one thing into another thing. جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ so the light and the day are something else. So Ja'ala can have two maf'ul bihi, two maf'ul, or one maf'ul. If one maf'ul, this means to create. So if he has one maf'ul, it means to create. There's two maf'uls, make A, change A into B, or A is made into B. So what we're saying here, there's not two maf'uls. It looks like two maf'uls, because this who is referring to Ja'al or Ja'al. That was stupid, I don't understand. But that's what they're saying. Yes, how does that work? I don't know. But the maqsood is then, it's not a maf'ul bihi, it's like a maf'ul mutlaq or something like this. And the maqsood is this ayah. But not for Zakariya but like this. That nobody wants to be left without any children. You want somebody to live after you, right? Your legacy is left behind. You have, you have, when they make dua for you, they pray for you, they send sawab for you, etc. Et so you say, وَجْأَلْ وَالْوَارِثَ minna. So make, the wa, make, the, make my inheritors from me. I cut their destined for me to have inheritors from my progeny. Aye? Destined or create inheritance from my progeny and do not leave me without a progeny. Wajal warithan minna. Let us have children as well, basically. So basically it's so extensive quwa. That we have the quwa to reproduce. So grant us ma'ina wa quwatina. Wajal minna warithan. And let us have children, basically. This is one tafsir that one shara they're given. But the uslub of having that as a zamir, I don't understand the uslub, but again, TB and those guys saying they're much better in Arabic. So you know, accept that it's permissible, that's something you can do. Yes, but the meaning, the meaning. Yes, so this who here is not like a maf'ul bihi, etc. More like a maf'ul mutlaq. Allah, I know how that structure works. But this is the maf'um that they've taken out. And the third, the third 
possibility here is Waj al hu. What does this mean? Waj al hu. And the who referring to? Not the tamti. But it says, Matina bi asma'ina wa abusarina wa kuwatina ma ahayatana. Yes? So give us kuwa. We have strength in our summer, our basar, and our bodily strengths. And then we use those in the right way, yes? When we use those in the right way, what happens then? That's, that's what it says. So whatever we acquire, so we have sama, we have basar, we have kuwa. We use a sama, basar, and kuwa properly. And then what do we acquire? What, what do we acquire from? We, acquire, we use it to acquire something. What do we acquire from this? Ilm. So what Allah refers to is ilm. The thing that we acquire from the sama, the basar, the quwa. All right? And warith is, is majaz, mush, majaz mur, ma, uh, ishtiqaqi. The ism al-fa'il is in the meaning of the maf'ool. Like, ishatin radiyah, ishatin mardiyah. So the majaz ishtiqaq, you use one sayqa, you mean another sayqa. And the Arabs, this is in the Quran as well. Ishatin radiyah. So not radiyah, but ishatin mardiyah. So warith means mawruth. The thing that's inherited from me. The thing that is? Inherited from me. So the meaning of this will then be what? Uh, like the, what comes in the hadith? When a person passes away, everything come, goes away. He's only got a few things left. Meaning the good that he left behind. One of the things that he left behind is أو ilm, أو, uh, ilmin ينتفئ به that we benefit from. Are you following? So as if saying, make, when I leave behind, I leave behind wealth, money, all that. But make my inheritance. Make my inheritance what? The ilm. And make the things that I, so the quwa that you have given me, make that my legacy. Are you following? So make my knowledge, my legacy, my inheritance. So waj'aluhu, waj'al ma hasaltu bil sam'i wal basari wal quwwati al mawruth minna, our legacy and our inheritance. Are you following? Waj'al sa'rana ala man zalamana. Sa'r, you see revenge, retortion, retaliation, meaning. Here, it has two possibilities. So make our, make our revenge and our retaliation and retortion against those who have oppressed us and wronged us. So those who have done zulm against us, you take retaliation from them for us. Okay? There's two possibilities. One meaning could be haqqiqu, any? Allah, take the revenge. You take revenge from them. They have oppressed us. They're doing wrong for us. You take revenge for us against every zalim, every oppressor. Right? So I like ij'alhu, haqqiqu, make it. Like make it happen, make it make it a reality. Yes? So make the retaliation, make it a reality. Make it a reality. So who those who are wronging us and oppressing us, intentionally zulman, then you make sure that you take revenge from us, make that a reality. Or the second possibility is al tha'rana ala man zalamana la ala ghayrina. The maqsud is not making a reality, but make sure it's on those people who have wronged us, not anybody else. Don't collect your punishment. Aye? So make our thar on those who have wronged us, not on anybody else. Yes, you may have misunderstandings. And so make so two possibilities. Make the, re, make the revenge and retaliation, retortion a reality. That those people are punished for their oppression. And number two is. Let it not be that in what happens, we end up doing zulm. Because they oppressed you and then wrong to you, you take revenge and you go beyond the limits. And don't, don't let that ever that, that, that happen. What should happen? That make our thar upon those who have wronged us. Don't let it go to somebody else. And we get angry, we go beyond the limits. Do you understand? So, two possibilities. One surna ala man adana. And help us against those who have wronged us. Ada yu adi muadatan is to. Do have enmity against us. Do not make the dunya our musibah in the dunya, meaning, there's always going to be difficulty and hardship in the dunya. It's never going to be perfect. So, with the musibah that comes, if it happens in the dunya, that's better. Don't let it come to our deen. So, it's a, it's a, de- one loss is destined for you. Either you miss fajr or you miss out on, a, on some wages. It's better I miss out on wages and don't miss my father's salah because deen. I, I uh, end up missing out on a chance to uh, go on a holiday or I miss out on a chance to, go to, go to do my, do my hijs. So I'd rather do. If, so whatever loss I may have, 
let a loss incur in the dunya, not in our deen. Do not make the musibah in our deen. Do not make the dunya our ham is our objective, our goal, our target. Do not make the dunya our biggest target. So if you look at the opposite meaning, like an ishara. If you, if you have قَلِيلُ uh, الْحَمْ فِي مَا لَا بُدَّ مِنْهُ فِي أَمْنِ مَعَشْ مُرَخَصٌ فِي As long as the dunya is not the biggest target. It has to be a target. Because you have to say, well, I've got to, you have a target. I'm going out to work today to get money to feed my family. So the dunya is a target. But it's not the biggest target. What's the biggest target? That this will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to get up for salah. I have to do this, do X, Y, and Z. So you have the dunya, but the dunya is not the ultimate goal. Because what, and when something is the ultimate goal, what happens? You sacrifice everything for that. If the deen is the ultimate goal, then you sacrifice dunya for deen. So you can, you can, be, you can be striving for two things, but what's most important is it will be preceded and the other will be sacrificed. So don't make the dunya our akbar wa The, the akbar wa should be the deen. Mabalagh Mabalag is the peach, the, the muntaha, the pinnacle, the, the ultimate. Yes? And there's two possibilities of this. Do not make the dunya our ultimate knowledge, meaning, meaning our ilm is basically just how do you fix this? How do you computers? How do I fix the carpentry? How do I fix the carpet? How do I design the wall? How do I design the best toilet? How do I design the best bathroom? How do I design the best house? How do I modify my car? My, the, 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 the pinnacle of my knowledge is basically how to make Islah of the dunya. But rather, I was, how do I perfect my Salah? How do I, how do I acquire Khashya? How do I um, increase my Taqwa? How do I perform Hajj? How do I perform Umrah? So this Mablaga Ilmina should not be, do not make the dunya the pinnacle of my knowledge. What comes in the Quran? فَعَرِذْ أَنْ مَنْ تَوَلَّا أَنْ ذِكْنَا وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So when you have, this one, this is this one here, look. When he says Mab, the Akbar Hamina is, they only want the dunya. They don't want the deen, so they start to sacrifice the religion. Dalika, those people, Mablagu, Dalika Mablagu min the dunya is the ultimate uh, target. And then, Ya'lamuna Zahir min al Hayati dunya. They know the, the apparent of the dunya. Only they know the apparent of the dunya, meaning what? These things here. And even the bathroom of the dunya, what's the bathroom of the dunya? The bathroom of the dunya is very beneficial, why? You can look at look at this. My hands, the blood is flowing, blood is flowing in my veins, my heart is pumping. This is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without my ikhtiyar, I'm digesting food right now, I'm breathing right now. I didn't breathe non-stop for 40 minutes, 30 minutes. I didn't even think about breathing. How does all this happen? I, my blood is pumping, my heart is pumping, my mind, my, my memory, my speech, my tongue. This is all. But all I know is basically, let's fix the clothes. Let's fix the car. So, يَعْلَمُنَا ظَاهِرُ مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا That's one tafsir. وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ غَافِلُونَ So basically saying, don't make us like these people. Whose ilm is only the mablaghum is the dunya and the hum is only the dunya. وَلَا تُسَلِّتْ عَلَيْنَا مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمُنَا And do not salata, do not give authority, control, possession uh, to al, uh, this is maf'ul bihi, to these people. So men who don't have mercy upon us, kind, compassionate people, don't ever give them authority over us because then they're the oppressors. So make our leaders people of compassion, kindness, care. For him, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah,